Let's get straight to some breaking news out of Kenya, and the country's Supreme Court has overturned the results of last month's presidential election. Citing irregularities committed by the election board, the court ordered a second vote that needs to be held within 60 days. And joining me now for more is TRT World's Gladys and Jorogi Morgan. Thanks so much for coming in, Gladys. So many international observers actually said this election was legitimate. Uh, and the results should be accepted. So it really does come as a surprise that the Supreme Court would rule this way. Yes, it is. And uh, the opposition's claims were that basically there were um, at, at least two thirds of the voting polls or polling stations, uh, that the results from those polling stations were actually fraudulent. That seems to have been so supported by a judge, it's by the judges, the Supreme Court judges. This is in no way a unanimous decision. Mm -hmm. It was a majority vote. It was five out of two. Two objected to it, saying even though there were irregularities, yes, and they agreed to that. Uh, they still, you know, even though there were irregularities, it was, it was still credible, but these were two. The majority have now said we have to go to new elections. It is a bit of a surprise. That means a lot more, pe a lot more work has to be put in by uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. But of course, it's a huge win for the, uh, the opposition. You have to remember that they had initially said that they will not go to court. They said just after uh, Uhuru was declared the winner, they said we won't follow the, the go to the judiciary for a decision. But now that they have gone, I feel that, I think they feel vindicated that they actually followed this route. They might feel vindicated, but what are the chances that they'll actually win in another election? The last election, this is the, the August 8th election, was already the most costly. Yeah. They will have to go and nationwide to convince everyone that they have to win. It is going to be tricky because, again, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, and William Ruto, his deputy, um, are, come from the biggest tribes in Kenya. They will have to do the calculation so that ethnically they can garner enough votes. Not, that, not just that. Um, they will have to go again, spend a lot more money on campaigns. Already a lot of people are in limbo. Uh, this were costly. People are waiting for this decision so that they can move on with their lives. Businesses were already holding out because, again, waiting, you, don't have, you don't have a president after an election. Mm. And that was already a, a long drawn out period right. ahead of the elections, at least a month in, if not more. Now they have to wait another two months. And so that state of limbo is bad for business and it's bad for politics. And it's going to be tense yet again um, ahead of those elections and even after, right. you would think. And with that tension, I mean, what could potentially be the consequences on the ground? Can we expect more scenes of violence? Well, the scenes of violence in previous elections were, were in the opposition strongholds. Now that they have been, that, you know, the vote has been nullified, um, I don't think they're likely to be scenes of um, violence. It's actually celebration in the opposition strongholds. The police, just hours before this uh, decision, the police in, uh, the, in the opposition stronghold of Kisumu had come out to say, um, well, you have to be peaceful, that we will not allow people to protest and loot. Uh, the, you already uh, basically mm -hmm. deployed security ahead of it just to make sure that there's no um, violence if the vote, uh, if the decision went either way. Right. But it seems that the chances, I would say, are very low right now. I think looking forward to the election and now looking ahead to now the next round of election, that's going to be interesting to see whether these tensions will play out in mm. the streets or not before and after. Okay. Gladys, thanks so much for that. We can actually turn live to Nairobi now and speak to John Allen Namu, who's a journalist in the Kenyan capital. Hi, John. Hope you can hear me clearly. Hi. Uh, just tell us so far what the reaction has been in Kenya to this ruling? Well, so far, at least outside of the Supreme Court, we've seen outbursts of celebration um, after the ruling um, that was given by the Supreme Court was right just a few minutes ago. And um, the reactions online and reactions from different parts of the country seem to be coming in thick and fast with um, obvious support for the decision from uh, Raila Odinga and Nasser stronghold and uh, consternation, but um, sort of quiet determination to go out and prove um, that Uhuru Kenyatta won this election from uh, strongholds from uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Those are the responses that we're getting so far. 
But can we expect some less celebratory reaction from the government supporters at this time? They had thought they had won this election. International observers, as we said before, said the election was basically free and fair. Uh, they were not expecting this entire vote to be nullified. Yes, definitely there will be a lot of consternation. There will be a lot of uh, complaint about the result. Uh, the, the lawyer representing uh, Uhuru Kenyatta um, in this petition, Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, um, registered his, uh, his, uh, the complaints of Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, calling this a political decision rather than one that was made on the basis of law. Um, the IBC as well um, registered its, um, its, its response to this election, saying that right or wrong, it's a decision of the court and that uh, free and fair elections uh, ought to be held in 60 days. So yes, there is a disappointment within the, within the, the, the camp of uh, government supporters. But nonetheless, it's one that's uh, tempered by what seems to be coming through, at least at this time, a more quiet and perhaps even more stoic determination to ensure that uh, the next election in 60 days will be one that's more emphatic um, than this one that has just been nullified. Okay. John Alanamu joining us live there from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Thank you so much for that. Okay, we are actually looking at live pictures now from the Kenyan capital as people react to that Supreme Court ruling nullifying the election. Let's, let's listen in. Finally, impunity must be punished. Impunity must be punished. Not, not again in Kenya. In 2013, the Electoral Commission was found to have committed certain offenses relating to the law of procurement. And this time around, what the Electoral Commission did was treasonable in the sense that they wanted to declare or establish government against the constitution of the land. And therefore, the Commission is on trial. Before we can have a proper and free election, yes. that yes. Commission must, must be looked into yeah. and for... Yes proper elections will be held. I don't, I don't think that we will have that commission running the elections again. Thank you. Now, finally, there will be a final statement given by our, uh, the petitioners, but for now, I surrender the podium to Raila Molodinga. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very historic day. A very historic day, not just for Kenya, but for the African continent. As an officer of this court, I feel that the, the dignity and the integrity of the Supreme Court has been reestablished. And therefore, as we thank Justice Maranga and, and the majority, including the minority, the fact was able to give the minority of, of opportunity even to read their descending judgment was tremendous. You can see the openness with which these proceedings were conducted. Therefore, I'm happy to be a Kenyan today. And I'll call on my brother, but we will have to, as senior counsel uh, has just said, we will have to look deeply into the conduct of the Electoral Commission. We do not have faith that they are capable of conducting a free and fair election. Thank you. Maybe of course you can ask Maybe ask him before you. No, it's okay. No, no, just go ahead. Go ahead. Later. Later.